it's me nim sony welcome back to another video today i'm working on the tutorial series that i started a while ago this video it's not a tutorial as such it's more of an informational video now what i've been looking at a little bit is uh, i've noticed a little bit of a problem where a lot of people don't fully understand the fixed update function how it's used when it's used and more importantly how to use delta time as well so here we've got a little bit of information here the update rate and the fixed update functions these are two separate functions that you'll have noticed anyone who's do, doing any scripting in unity you'll already have seen these so i decided i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna do a little video explaining these things very importantly because one of the things i've noticed is especially on forums um, whenever you look for any information on this i've not yet to see anyone mention units when it comes to this so everyone's always saying when you're working in the fixed update it runs at a specified rate as i've got written here it runs at a specified rate therefore you don't really need to use the delta time that's wrong please just stop saying it just stop saying that you must use delta time when you're working or converting between units all it does for you is convert between units firstly let's have an understanding of what units we're working with so this is pure physics this is just standard physics when we're working with position or more importantly distances which is what a position is it's a distance from the center point then we're working with meters when we're working with velocity or speed we're working with meters per second when we're working with acceleration acceleration is a change in velocity over time so that is meters per second per second or written as meters per second squared this is basic physics this is stuff you might already know anyways let's have a look at the info here very quickly before i go on to the next slide the update rate uh, the update function sorry renders uh, render frames it, it, it renders at render frames <laughs> it, it runs at render frames there we go that makes sense so that means that every time the screen updates uh, so if i do this i'm now paused every time the screen updates every single actual render frame your update function gets run your fixed update doesn't work like that it runs at physics frames and that is more important when you look at the next little bit of information the update obviously runs at frame rate because every time there's a frame you get an update function the fixed update it runs as a specified rate at a specified rate let's have a look at that rate if we go to the time manager you can see here fixed time step 0.02 by default as you can see here that is 50 hertz that means 50 times a second by default how do we know pop open your calculator 0 0.02 as we've got written here oh no we don't do that one divided by 0 0.02 gives us 50. one over the amount here gives us the amount of uh, frames per second so this is the amount of time that an actual uh, amount of actual time that each frame takes so you divide by that amount you get the amount of frames per actual second anyways close the calculator we don't need that you can see here update uses the del uh, delta time function the fixed update uses the fixed delta time function however if you look at unity's script reference here which uh, by the way ignore the hat films video there on the right you'll notice that under fixed delta time you can see here information for reading the delta time it is recommended to use delta time as in time dot delta time instead uh, even when you're looking at fixed delta time because it automatically returns the right delta time if you are inside a fixed update function or an update function so it doesn't matter what function you're working with if you use time dot delta time instead of fixed you will always get the right one whereas fixed will always give you a correct uh, the fixed only it won't change depending on what function you're running in and of course you'll notice this one isn't read only as opposed to time delta time which is read only as you can see here and that's because this one is actually just the number here if you change it you change this that's the fixed time step that's it let's have a look at the most important thing here which is converting between them if you've got a speed of let's say five and you're adding that every frame because you know that's how your game runs you add it in your update function or your fixed update function you've got a unit of five meters per second that's your unit of speed 
you've stored it. Then you're applying it per frame. That's not appropriate. This will allow you to convert between the two. You've got a unit of per second, which is here, convert from per second to per frame. You've got a unit of meters per second, so that's per second. You need to convert it to per frame so that you can run it in your update function. Multiply by delta time. That's why everyone's always telling you on the internet, you multiply it by delta time to keep it frame, frame independent. Doesn't matter. You need to understand why. This is why. Because you're converting from per second to per frame. Because you've got a per second number, meters per second, you've got a speed, and you're applying that per frame. You can't do that. You have to convert it into an appropriate number. So you multiply by delta time. Of course, if you want to go the other way, and you've got something that you've calculated in the frame, you've calculated a speed based on moving objects, then you've got per frame. You need to divide by delta time to convert it back to per seconds. When you're storing a number across multiple frames, like it says here, work in real world units across frames. Very important. If you've calculated a speed from something that's moving in your game, then you have to store it in per second. Do not store it in per frame because your next frame could be a different amount. It's going to change the speed that you've calculated. Yes, this absolutely applies to fixed update. Even in your fixed update function, and you'll have read the, you'll read you'll read this all over the internet. It doesn't matter. You don't need to use delta time. You absolutely do. You do need to use delta time. Like I said here, you're converting between units. Now for the little demonstration. When I press spacebar, things start moving. Now, there's actually two boxes in each side of this side here well, of this panel here. Um, one extra box here on the left hand side is actually a physics object. So if we look at this, we'll see here we've got a rigid body and it's got a box collider. It's not completely stuck in place. You can see freeze position has X and Z, but not Y. That means this is a hovering object. This is actually a moving object. If I switch on gravity here, click, and you can see it starts moving. It's uh, moving very, very slowly. I don't know why. But uh, anyways, point is uh, gravity does actually affect it. So this is a physics object. Oh, I know why it was moving slow. It's because I'm already uh, setting its position. Anyway, ignore that. So you've got a physics object here, which when I press spacebar, sets its velocity to one upwards. And you can see it's moving one upwards, you know, one per second. That's its actual velocity. And how do we know its actual velocity? Because if I set drag, you can see it actually slows down and it'll eventually stop. Right, so we're going to undo that drag. These other boxes, this one on the left is plus one. That means I'm plusing one every frame. The next one is plus one times delta time. Then of course the same thing applies here on the right hand side, but in the different in a different function. Now watch what happens. If you look at the frame rates here, you'll see that we've got 60 frames per second because you know I'm v-syncing. That's for the update. And then our fixed update rate, like we calculated earlier, is 0.02 which means we're getting 50 per second. Watch this. You see how the two that don't have delta time applied shoot off into the distance. That's because we're not considering time. We're not converting to an appropriate unit. And you'll notice this applies to both the update function and the fixed update function. So everyone who's saying, oh, the fixed update rate is always steady, so it doesn't matter, you don't need to use delta time. It's irrelevant. It's not about whether it's steady or not. It's about working in the correct units. We are working here with the unit one meter per second. You cannot apply that 50 times a second and expect it to move the correct amount, as you can see. So we have to multiply by delta time and you'll notice something very important. The velocity, which I'm not, you know, I'm not applying any changes to its position over time is just working at the same movement speed as the other two. That's because we've converted to meters per second, which our physics engine is working with, and it all matches up perfectly. So this is one meter per second. This is one meter per second. This is one meter per second. It doesn't matter about our frame rates, whatever. Now watch what happens when we slow down time. In fact, I'm going to pause the game very quickly. So here, I've let the one on the left hand side move um, up a little bit and the one on the right hand side move up a little, a little bit as well. These are the ones that don't include delta time. So they're moving at a, a set frame rate. 
This is something to, to understand very importantly. The one on the left, pretty close to the one on the right. That's because our frame rates are pretty much uh, very quite similar. Watch what happens now if I change our time scale. So this means that we're moving in slow motion. 0.5 is half the speed and 0.25 we're now mo moving four times slow motion. So we're moving at quarter time, a uh, quarter of the real world time. Here you can see that our frame rate has suddenly increased to massive amounts. That's because we are working with 60 frames per real second. That's the render frame, uh, that's the render rate. That's what we're seeing on screen. That's our render, it's 60, 60 frames per second. That's what we're seeing. However, when we're going in slow-mo, you can see this increases massively. That's because we're still rendering at 60 times a second, except we're moving at a quarter of the speed. So in 60, you know, 60 frames, which is a second of real world time, we've only moved a quarter of in-game time, which means that we have to multiply that by four to get the actual frame rate that the computer is reading, that the, the game is reading. So what we do, we take our 60 frames per second, we multiply by four, as you can see, 240. 240 frames per second is what the computer is seeing. So that means that as a result, when we're moving at timescale one, you can see that object there on the update rate runs off at a specific speed. Even when we go quarter time, it still does the same thing here on the right hand side. It shoots off at the exact same speed because we're still at the same frame rate in real world time. The one on the left, however, is stuck at 50 per in-game second. So it actually moves slower relative to that block. So you can see here quite obviously this one moves slower than it was at one. You'll also notice something else. It is stuttering when we go in slow motion. That's because it is moving at a fixed rate even when you know we're moving slower in time. And we'll have a look at that as well. Let's switch over to our time here and change it so that we are now working at five frames per second for our physics rate. We're looking only at our physics rate. Look carefully at what's happening. Even though they're moving at the same speed, they actually happen at different rates. So that applies to our uh, velocity one, which is our actual physics object, and it applies to the one that I'm physically moving. What we can do with that is, if you look carefully, when I click this and switch on interpolation, this happens. It's very unusual, isn't it? So what's actually happening here is this is the actual movement that we're getting on the physics uh, frame rate. So we've got five frames per second. That's what our physics is being calculated as. The one on the left, however, the actual physics object seems to be moving smoothly. Even when we go in super slow-mo, and you can see here the frame rate really has dipped. We still get super smooth. That's because it's interpolating. What that means is it calculates this frame and then in between there for our real world, you know, 60 frames per second, we get the smoother. So each of the actual render frames just updates it naturally as it should be. And that's basically ending what I wanted to explain. Essentially, what you have to do when you're working with any of the update functions, if you're working in update, if you're working in fixed update, it doesn't matter. You must always use your delta time based on this concept here. This is my explanation of delta time anyway. This is my explanation of the fixed update, of the update and delta time. It all fits together. You can't just keep going off the basis that Oh, when you're changing something over time, you have to multiply by delta time. It doesn't make sense. The units are what matters. You must convert from per second to per frame if you're storing your numbers in per second, because that's what you should be doing in the first place. If you're storing an object speed, you're going to store it in physics values, which is meters per second. Same applies for acceleration, meters per second squared. And remember with acceleration, you've got per second per second, as you, as you can see here. That means you've got two units of time there, both affecting each other. 
So you don't just do this once, you do this twice when converting. That's my explanation anyway. Hopefully I've not gone on too much of a rant in explaining all of these little things and bits and bats. And hopefully you've got some understanding now, or at least an improved understanding of fixed delta time, delta time, update and fixed update. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be doing more proper tutorials later on and I might do more informational videos. Let me know if this was a bit too long, if this was a bit too short, if you want a little bit more information, if you want to see some actual code, whatever. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.